fellow Diamond Painting Addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today for this week's Whip and Chat. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Whip, W-I-P, stands for Work in Progress and this is mine. You are welcome and encouraged to go grab whatever you are working on and work alongside while I chat. Or alternatively, you can treat this as a podcast and just listen while I chat. I am working today on my Pam Diamond painting called Foxy Love. It's going pretty quickly, so I'm pretty happy about that, but I decided the the fox in the middle is very confetti heavy, so I decided I was going to do kind of the outside first because there's a lot of multi-placing. There are a lot of ABs in this though, so I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to zoom in here to the section that I'm going to be working on and I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I've got my timer started. Let me get some drills poured here. And then I will jump into my life update. Who? it's been a week, you guys. Another long week of hubby being gone at work. I'm still not used to him being gone all the time. I mean, I think I've said before, I don't want to get used to him being gone all the time. He actually even remarked when he came home, he said, wow, I can't believe how much better, how much quicker you fall asleep. On the nights that I'm here and I said I just I don't sleep well when he's gone I've taken to leaving one of my podcasts that I'm listening to running as I fall asleep just so I have some kind of background noise because I don't know if that's part of it maybe it's just too quiet he snores so maybe that's part of it as well I don't know I just I keep thinking every week you know, he's home Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, but Sunday he packs up and heads back to work. And I just, this isn't how I want us to, to live the rest of our lives. And I know it's probably not forever, but there are still no new jobs available in our area. So I don't know what the poor people that he was working with that didn't take jobs like he did they were waiting for these other companies supposedly gonna hire them and it didn't happen I mean I would imagine they're probably traveling for work too but that's so hard I mean it's hard enough on us and I don't have young kids or anything I can't imagine being someone who is at home with small children or working with small children and then having your spouse gone all the time it just makes everything more difficult so he's been gone, I'm still not sleeping great, but I have been sorting through things and packing things and donating things this week. So I think watching the house get a little bit emptier has sort of made everything a little bit more real, more scary, but more real. I mean, I'm excited for this next chapter, but there's a lot of unknowns still. So that makes it kind of scary and lots of things that we still need to be deciding on. And so, yeah, just I'm trying to take it one day at a time, <laughs> just focus on right now. My focus is just on cleaning out the house. What do I need to do to get the house empty enough that we can paint everything that we need to because we do still need to paint. And then once we get to that point, deciding how we're going to transport everything and what we're going to do. Every time I pack something up, I told my husband, I feel like I get closer and closer to let's just leave it all behind, sell everything and just move with nothing. <laughs> because just the process of everything. And I know that's probably just unknowns and and that kind of thing talking you know anything unknown is automatically scarier than something known but like for instance learning that we have to export both of our cars and then import them which I get the reasons behind but it just makes everything more difficult and so now I'm seriously contemplating whether or not we're going to sell our second vehicle which I really didn't want to do one I didn't want to be kind of stuck up there with only one vehicle and or 
stuck having to purchase a new vehicle immediately. I mean, it wouldn't be brand new, but new to us. But given all the other headaches that go along with taking both vehicles, it's starting to seem like maybe that's just going to be the smarter option. That means we don't have to worry about transporting both of them. We don't have to worry about exporting both of them. We don't have to worry about driving both of them cross country. And we would have, you know, whatever we earned from the income of that selling that vehicle, we would have to add to our moving fund or whatever. So I'm leaning towards that. I just think it's going to be less stressful in a lot of ways to only have the one vehicle. It does mean that we're going to get stuck probably buying something almost immediately once we get to Canada, but it is what it is. I mean, if we moved up there with nothing, then we would be doing the same thing. So, and my husband is a car guy. He's always on the lookout for, I mean, he spends his weekends looking at cars, even when he's not in the market for one. So it's not like that would be a hardship and he knows vehicles. So we, wouldn't have to worry about ending up with something dodgy or whatever, but we'll see. The thing about selling it is it's a car that belonged to my dad and who this is a whole saga in itself. So my parents owned several vehicles and when they passed away, my siblings and I each got one of them. So I've been driving this car since 2010, roughly. And it's been a good car. It's a very nice car, something my husband and I would probably never buy on our own. It's got lots of bells and whistles and it's just been a, a good, reliable car. I mean, we've had to do some work to it here and there, obviously, but nothing super significant, but it is a car that my dad owned. And so I feel like if I'm going to sell it, I need to give my siblings first shot at it before I just take it to a dealership and try and sell it or we just try to sell it on our own or whatever, however we end up doing it. I don't know that either one of them will want it, but I feel like I need to give them first shot at it. And I'm sad to be getting rid of it, but also just kind of thinking about it in my head, making that decision and deciding to talk with my siblings and all of that, I feel better. So I'm gonna take that as a sign that that's probably what I should do. This move is going to be anxiety in inducing enough. I know I'm going to have anxiety from the move, from moving away from all of my family. I mean, I'll have my husband and my son, but everybody else, you know, I've lived in this place for my entire life. I've moved cities, but I've lived in this state my entire life. And so it's just intimidating, I think is the thing so yeah just lots of stress and I feel like that's the thing to do to get rid of one of the cars so that we don't have to drive separately when we are traveling across the country and then across the border there is something to be said I told my husband you know when my husband moved here he packed a suitcase and pretty much left everything behind and just moved down here but I already lived here I had a house, we had vehicles, you know, all that stuff was set up. So it was a loss, a lot less unknowns for him moving here than it is for us kind of moving up there. Oops, I almost stuck that on the wrong one. Anyway, so yeah, we're sort of, I'm sorting through the house. I did get quite a bit done this weekend. Hubby and I spent Friday, we loaded up a bunch of stuff household goods, a bunch of old books, stuff that probably would just get thrown away if I donated them to a library or like a secondhand bookstore. So we just donated them to our local thrift store because there's still, I mean, all the books were in decent shape. They're just old paperback versions that aren't worth as much as hardback copies. So we loaded all those up. He made a run to the thrift shops. So we got a, a load of stuff out. We did also load up some furniture and take it over to my daughter's apartment. So she now has one of our bookcases that she'd asked for and the cubbies from out of the storage cubbies from out of my office that she had wanted. She actually has cubbies already 
and these were hers was a nine nine cube storage thing mine were two sixes but you put them the two sixes on each side of the nine she's got all that storage now so she has way more storage in her bedroom and because her cubby storage is her dresser she doesn't have a traditional dresser and then one of our bookshelves that she's going to use for business storage thing she's going to be getting my old cutting machine i'm going to buy a new one when we get to canada so she's taking the older one and just trying to figure out where stuff is going to go in her apartment she had originally asked for one of our couches but she's decided against that now and i just think having more storage for her is going to be a good thing so we took those over and got those put in her apartment for her and kind of placed where she wanted so now she can do some reorganizing and things and while we were there we also had taken over um, a painting of mine that she wanted so then we were trying to figure out where to hang things and the person that lived there before her had left nails in the wall and so she just had kind of hung things wherever that person had nails and I'm like well is this how you want it you know do you want this here do you want that and she's like well what she really wanted behind her love seat was like a, a collage of the diamond paintings that I've given her because she has my Harajuku she has the wolf shaman that I finished she has a wolf painting that I did when I very very first started diamond painting and she had Princess Mononoke she's got a couple of other smaller ones too but those basic ones with all the wolves and everything in the Harajuku she wanted kind of in a collage on the living room wall so hubby and I spent some time there kind of helping her figure out where everything was going to go and hanging stuff up and getting it so it looked good and she had a bulletin board she wanted hung so hubby did that for her so she's feeling better about some of that stuff I think and they are still tearing up the street in front of her apartment they had it for a while where half of the residents not her but half of the residents of the apartments could park in their parking spots but then this last week she said they got another notice basically the street that runs by the apartment building they're putting in a new water line and a new culvert i mean they basically dug up the entire street to put this culvert in so hopefully that means they're close to being done because this has been going on since before she had her surgery and everybody's having to park you know a couple blocks over the people who live in the houses where they're having to park are not thrilled I mean it's a public street so there's not a lot they can do but it's just frustrating and annoying anyway so we got a bunch of stuff hung up for her I told my husband it made me feel better she's got more storage so now she's got more room to put things away my, I am a, a neat freak my daughter very much is not she is a lot like my sister in that when she gets home from work if it ends up on the floor then cool it can just stay there until she feels like picking it up that drives me bananas it doesn't i don't have to have everything cleaned and dusted and vacuumed necessarily but i want everything to be neat and put away like when we were there yesterday hanging up her pictures i'm like i'm stepping on your coat why is it in the floor Oh, well, I was hot, so I just took it off there. I'm like, it's right next to the coat rack. Why didn't you just hang it up? Oh, I don't know. I was just hot. Okay. Not my circus, not my monkeys. That's hard to remember sometimes. But anyway, I told my husband once we got a bunch of that stuff hung up for her, it feels immediately, at least to me, more lived in. Having nothing, having bare walls always makes someplace feel incomplete to me I don't know why I don't know if that's my something my mom did and so that's something I've just picked up I don't know if that's just something about my feelings about it but whenever I have moved let's see how many times in the last 20 years I've moved probably six times some closer together than others but one of the first things I always want to do is get art or paintings or pictures or something up on the walls that somehow makes it seem more permanent more homey so I liked that for her 
And plus she seemed to be making some more decisions about, it felt like I think that she was looking at that apartment as a short-term kind of thing. I think it's going to end up being more long-term than she thinks. I think maybe she's starting to see that, that she can, that she can think of it as a long-term kind of thing. And I mean, it's been a good apartment. It's the, the stuff with the parking has been frustrating, but her landlord is nice. He, anytime she has a problem, she's gotten it fixed. He does a really good job of communicating with them when things are going on. So I'm happy for her to be where she is. I know she'd like someplace that maybe was a little bit newer, a little more updated, but budgets are a thing. And there's always the chance that wherever she moved to, the landlord would not be as attentive about getting things fixed and stuff like that. So even if the place she was in was newer, I mean, that might make you think that there would be less opportunities for things to go wrong when it's new build and stuff like that, but that's not necessarily true. I, eons ago, used to work for an apartment leasing company, and some, some places, even if they were older, were very on top of things, and some places, even if they were newer, you couldn't get a hold of anyone to save your life if something broke. So we've gotten some things out of the house that we've given to her. Hubby also listed some things that pieces of furniture that we're ready to get rid of. We've got some furniture downstairs that we don't need. My elliptical, I don't need that anymore. I might get one once we get to Canada, but I don't, it's not something I'm going to schlep to Canada. So that went up for sale as did my old drafting table. I originally bought it for diamond painting, but I just, it didn't work the way that I wanted. And I actually have found that I prefer working with it flat on the table. I know a lot of people say that gives them back problems and stuff. I have not experienced that yet anyway. So for now, I'm happy with my adjustable table and doing it that way. So the drafting table is not going with us. So we're going to be getting rid of that. So yeah, as stuff leaves the house, I think it the house looks emptier. I'm going to start taking stuff off the walls. We did spend quite a bit of time, like I said, going through things, donating some things. I went through a bunch of old memento stuff of the kids. I had them go through a bunch of like old photos and things that I'm going to be getting rid of. So that kind of stuff is gone. I spent yesterday packing up board games and card games. I love playing board games and card games just don't get many opportunities to do it and so I thought I would go ahead and pack those up. I've got some blankets packed up. I think the next thing that I'm going to work I've been working on our closet which is where the games were and so, and a bunch of the mementos and stuff like that. So now that that stuff is all kind of out of the way I think this coming week because it's supposed to be hopefully getting warmer Today it's supposed to be 90. The next week it's supposed to be in the mid 60s. So I don't think we're quite out of spring yet and into summer, but I think we're getting there. So I think it's okay for me to start packing up sweatshirts and coats and things like that that I probably am not going to wear on a daily basis from now until we move. I mean, everything is still gonna be accessible because we're just kind of, for now, shoving all of the totes and everything in my daughter's old bedroom. I figure that's a good way for us to kind of keep track of how much there is. We're expecting that if we get a trailer, it'll be roughly that size. So that will give us, or at least me, some kind of visual guide. Of, <laughs> okay, I still have plenty of room. We can pack more stuff or, hmm, this is getting too full. I probably need to get rid of some things. Because that's the thing is, looking at all of it, some things saying, no, I'm going to get rid of that has been freeing. Other things, it's been kind of sad. I think just sad because of me thinking, well, even if I'm giving it to like, there's some things that I'm giving to siblings. It's not like it's going out of the family or I'll never see it again. It's just that it won't be mine anymore. For instance, I'm giving my sister 
the nativity set that my grandmother made and that that's going to be hard i mean i feel good about the decision but i still know it's going to be hard for me to leave it behind and hand it over but i i just am not sure that i would survive a trip however we end up transporting our goods no matter how well we wrapped it it's just very fragile and i would feel terrible if anything happened to it so letting it go and having it stay with her with the understanding that if we would ever move back i get it back but i know she will love it and take care of it and and it will have a good home with her so i need to get together with my siblings and have a conversation with them i keep putting it off and i think it's because i'm afraid of well i'm not afraid of i'm just avoiding it i guess i don't like confrontations and I don't think it will really turn into one. So I don't think that's why I'm avoiding it. I think I'm avoiding the conversation because I'm disappointed that I promised something that didn't happen. And it wasn't something I could do anyway. So I probably shouldn't have said that it was going to happen. But I said before, my parents had multiple vehicles. One of the vehicles that my dad owned was a what we called his project car and he's owned it for as long as I can remember. It was a little Fiat, two-seater Fiat, and he loved to tinker around with it. My dad was a big gearhead. He loved racing. He's a big Formula One and IndyCar fan, and he loved working on this car. And I mean, he would get it all put together and it would be working, and then he would decide to tear it all apart again. So when I say it was a project car, it really was a project car. When he passed away, it was basically, well, it wasn't in pieces. He had replaced the engine, but he had spent probably several years buying, we think, except for the engine, literally every single part that went on that car because he was going to restore it. And my parents had a three-car garage, so the third bay was this car, and he had all of his tools out there. And he worked on it all the time, but he just never got it finished. And I've decided after all these years that he probably wasn't ever going to finish it. He had it running at one time. And then when they moved to the house that they were living in, when they passed away, he pulled everything out of it. He pulled all the seats out of it. I mean, he basically pulled everything out of the interior, the carpets, everything. He reupholstered the seats. So we have four seats for this two seater car. And then we have two of everything, two of every body panel, two bumpers, two windshields. It's a convertible, so two convertible tops, two sets of tires, everything duplicated except for the engine. He had the engine that was in it. He took that out and replaced it with the new engine that he had bought. But it hasn't run since then. And my brother got the car. That was the vehicle that he got when my parents passed away but it did not run and so at the time I told my brother that we would my husband and I would take it it, it could get stored at our house and my husband would try and work on it and get it running and 10 years later nothing has been done to it it sat in our garage for years and every time I would try to get my husband to work on it he would, well, I need more space because we have a two car garage and we had another vehicle parked in there. And I didn't want to just let the other vehicle set outside, not parked in the garage for years. And so I said, well, you know, of a weekend, we'll just move it and then you can work on it. Well, that made things difficult. And we did things like he bought little lifts to put it on and then he bought uh, little slider things that you put on the wheel so you could just push it. Putting it on those slider things ended up giving him a hernia. And after that, really, really nothing happened with it. And basically, it's just been sitting in my garage for the last 10 years with nothing happening to it. It's been a source of frustration between my husband and me because because it has sit there for so long, he just piles stuff on it and that makes me crazy. But now we're moving and I need my brother to decide what he's going to do with it. 
Now, I will preface all of this by saying that in the 10 years that it's been sitting in my garage, my brother has never inquired about the car, when it was going to be done, if it was going to be done. We, we have moved just once, but we have moved since the car was in my garage. So it moved from my last house to this house. And my brother never inquired about the car or what we were doing with it or anything. I'm fairly certain he has never renewed the registration of the car. Now it's old enough to be an antique and it doesn't run. So it's not that that's a big deal or anything, but it's not anything that he's been putting money into. I just, I feel bad having to have a conversation that I promised that this thing would be at least able to run if nothing else. And it isn't even that. So I don't know what he's going to want to do with it, whether he's going to want to put it in storage someplace, whether he's going to want to sell it to someone that would want to restore it. My brother is not a car person. He doesn't know enough about cars to restore it. And the thing is, like I said, with all the duplicate parts, literally the car, even though it's a very small two seater, it was like a sixties model, two seater convertible, we still have a shed full of nothing but spare parts for it. All the tires, all the interior parts. And then in the garage next to the car is all like the body panels and the fenders and the seats and all that kind of stuff. I'm looking forward to getting it gone because that's basically a shed and a half a garage that would then be empty because they don't, it's stuff that doesn't even belong to me. Just not a conversation I'm looking forward to having. Same thing with telling them that I'm probably selling my dad's car for different reasons, but also not a conversation I'm looking forward to. So I think it's just a bunch of sad things. You know, I think also sad too in that these are gonna be conversations I'm having with them because we're leaving. And even though I'm excited for that and I'm excited that we're going, it's still a lot of change, a lot of kind of bittersweet leaving behind. Okay, I had to take a break to take a drink. You guys, I have become a Dr. Pepper Zero addict. I don't normally drink pop. I mean, I went for years without drinking pop because I didn't want all the sugar in the full sugared versions. My husband drank, because of his diabetes, he drinks the zero sugar ones. But you know, back when it was just Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, I never liked the kind of chemical aftertaste of those. Things have gotten better. Sugar substitutes have gotten better. They don't all taste like chemicals. He was experimenting with the Coke Spice and some of the other Pepsi Zero, some of the zero sugar versions. And he happened to buy some Dr. Pepper one time. And we were out and about and I was just dying of thirst. We were someplace we didn't have easy access, but he had a drink. He takes his roadie, we call it, with him everywhere. So I took a drink of it and I was like, wow, this is actually good. I like the way this tastes. So he bought me a case the next time we went grocery shopping. And now, huh, I've got to stop drinking so many of them, but it's so good. It's been so long since the, that burn of the carbonation. Mm. Anyway, okay, so enough about sad, moving. Moving is good. I don't want to say that moving isn't good. Like I said, I'm excited about it, just sad about the things that we're going to have to leave behind. Excited for the new stuff. Okay, so let's switch gears and move on to my diamond painting life. What's going on in my diamond painting life? Well, again, I think in some ways a lot, in some ways not so much. If you saw the video yesterday, you saw that I finished the universe in a jar. So that was my second Spangler. It was the second oldest of my five oldest kits. So I now have two of the five done, which makes me feel good. It's like I said, two Spanglers. So feeling good that I've made a dent in some of my Spanglers. Cause I think previous to this, had I even done a Spangler? Oh yeah, I did the Firefly one and that's it. I think at one point I had like 11 or 12 Spanglers. I've gotten rid of a couple of them, but I still have, I think six or seven. So I did want to make an effort to get several of them done this year. I think I still have one more on my want series list. Anyway, I finished that one. What I have discovered 
same with bubble fairies is that working on some of these older kits the drills tend to be a lot trashier than i'm used to they are a lot more gappy than newer kits and that's not just diamond art club that's any kits any companies they just seem to be gappier than so it just was frustrating to work on because for instance i'll work on this kit everything fits together really nicely i'm loving this kit and then i'll go work on an older kit whether it's diamond art club or somebody else and the drills just aren't as good the, the gaps are more noticeable and i find myself spending a lot of time kind of fussing with drills and I have to actually remind myself, okay, stop doing that. We're fussing with gaps and things is not going to get this thing finished. But it's just frustrating to have to be continually sorting out trashy drills as well as getting sidetracked, trying to make all the gaps as minimal as possible. But I finished it. It turned out really cute. And I'm glad it's done. I mean, I'm glad I, I didn't abandon it and I stuck with it and I finished it. I think it is a cute diamond painting. It had a lot going for it, just like Bubble Fairies did, but the process of it was just not as smooth as I would have hoped. Now, that's not anything exclusive to DAC. It's just, yeah, improvements get made through the years, right? So I finished that one. I'm working on this one. I opened a kit from my want series which was a dreamer designs which is called lady luck and i can't wait to get started on this one this this particular kit is going pretty quick so i'm hoping maybe by the end of this week i'll have this one finished and then i can jump into lady luck at the same time as i'm doing both of these i'm also going to be trying to put in some pretty concerted effort on my josephine wall I'm so behind on that one, and I probably should have realized that it was going to be that way. I may at some point just have to say, okay, this is what I'm working on until it's finished. What I like to do, and I may do that this week, depending on how the rest of my packing goes. I'm feeling pretty good about the packing. Hubby and I made quite a big dent this weekend. I mean, I did some things while he was gone during the week. The things that I did kind of let us clear out some of the furniture so that we could either take it to my daughter or put it up for sale whatever we were going to do and so I'm feeling like I've made a pretty good stab at stuff now I've mostly been working in the basement and our bedroom so once I move into like the kitchen or something maybe I won't still feel that way but for now I'm feeling pretty good about it so if I spend a lot of time diamond painting this week and I don't get as much done on the house I'll be okay with that I just, I feel bad being like, as soon as hubby gets home from working all week, then I'm immediately like, okay, we need to do this, 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 and this as errands. And he doesn't mind. I mean, we're all moving. It's not like he expects me to do it all myself, but I just wish I could get more of it done by myself. Some of it I just can't do alone, moving furniture and things like that. And some of it is just he needs to be here to help make the decisions. So because some of the stuff is his. <laughs> okay, so I want to put in some time on the J wall. I need to get it finished before DP for Pets starts. I've been going through stuff. Just FYI, if any of you purchased any of the mystery boxes that I've done before, I because I cleared out my cube storage, I still am going to have some mystery boxes that I'm going to be putting together with storage options and trays and just maybe some pins and things that I just, I have so many of, I'm not going to take them all with me to Canada. I'll have some more mystery boxes if anybody's interested in those. Once I get them all put together, I'll have more information on those. Anyway, so I wanna get the J wall done definitely before June, before DP for Pets starts. Also, speaking of DP for Pets, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about it. It's basically going to run the same as it did last year, but I thought I would just share kind of the basics of the rules so that if people had questions, maybe that would answer most of them. I will do a formal video announcement and like share what the prizes are gonna be and all that kind of stuff in May. But for now, it is basically going to be the same rules that I had last time, a new start, at least a 30 by 30, Partials are fine. It does not have to be licensed, pet themed. 
And speaking of pet themed, yesterday's new releases from Diamond Art Club, there were several animal kits. So if you were interested, I almost bought the cute little dachshund, but I really want to get a dachshund one that looks like the two little doxies that we used to have. We had two long haired miniatures and one was kind of the traditional black and brown coloring which was my son's dog and then one of them was a red haired long long hair dachshund which was my daughter's dog so super cute and i miss them so maybe i'll get a custom done of them at some point anyway so pet themed but if you want to use a mythical animal or anything like that dragons peacocks of course any regular kind of animal it doesn't necessarily have to be like a typical pet like a cat or a fish or a dog if it's an animal then you're probably fine dragons unicorns that kind of thing any of that is cool my, my goal is to get people to come together in the event to have fun working on similarly themed items and to win some cool prizes. That's it. I'm not gonna be a huge stickler about licensing or any of that. There will be, as in years past, a Google form. There'll be an entry form and an exit form. And I'll probably open the entry form before the event actually opens. Like when I do the event announcement in May, I'll probably open the entry form then. And then there'll be a Google form to fill out. A finish is required. And I know that some people feel like that's a lot because some people choose to do very large kits. What I will say is I'm only asking that it be a minimum of 30 by 30. So it doesn't have to be a huge kit. So make sure that it's something that you can finish by the end of the month because you will need to fill out the entry and exit forms and the exit form does require a finished photo. So just make sure that you will be able to do all of that. So the event runs, I guess I should have mentioned that, the event runs during the month of June, June 1st through June 30th. Like I said, the entry and exit forms, and then at the end, after all the exit forms have been filled out, I'll do like a montage video like I usually do, and then I will announce the winners. Right now I'm only planning on one prize package, but I'm I will definitely have one prize package. I'm hoping to put together a second one so I can have a, like a runner up like I usually do. Haven't done that yet, so we'll see how that goes, but I've got a couple of months to make that happen, so I think that's probably what will happen. Okay, so DP for Pets is coming up. I really, I wanted to do more events myself this year, but I just, like I said, it's, for me, it's too much social, social media. I can't talk today. Oh, one new thing that I am thinking that I'm going to do for the DP for Pets, I'm not going to have a separate Facebook group just for the event. I think what I'm going to do is I will just do a posting every day during the month of June, and that will be a post where people can comment and leave their progress photos, because I would love to see what everybody's working on before everyone is finished. So hopefully, doing that will give people enough of a chance to share kind of what's going on without me having to worry about trying to run two different groups of Facebook. I have enough trouble keeping up with the one that I have. So <laughs> I just, I think that's part of my problem with keeping up with events is I just, I don't spend enough time on social media. I actively have to put it on my calendar and stuff to, to do it. I just that's just not ever been a place that I spend a large amount of time. I like looking at everybody's pretty photos on Instagram, but I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook. So that's the rules for the event. Hopefully that answered some questions so people can kind of get ready, figure out what canvases you're gonna do. I personally think I'm going to, well, I say for sure, my plan was to do the Yorkies Yorkie and Magic Book kit that I have. It's a partial, and I thought I would do that one. But I also have the little Basset Hound one. So I may do both of those. I'm not sure. I might do the Basset Hound one first, just because it's so cute. Even though it's a fall one, and we're, this is going to be summer, but it's all good, right? 
Maybe I'll have time to do both. I also have a small unicorn one. Maybe I'll do that one as well. I am still waiting for my <laughs> pre-orders from Bella Art to show up. I got an email earlier this week saying that they were shipping out and they should be here shortly. And the tracking said that it would be here yesterday, but it did not show up yesterday. So hopefully those will show up this week and then I can add them. Although I'm thinking, see I ordered three of them. I wonder if I'm gonna have completed three kits by the time they get here. I don't know if I had Bubble Fairies finished when I ordered those, I might not have. In which case, Bubble Fairies Universe in a Jar and this one means that when I get those, then my stash count pretty much stayed the same, which is not a big deal, but Still trying to figure out, I've had so many of you tell me I should keep my kits because they're more expensive in Canada, but then I've had other people say it's not as bad. And I have options. A couple of questions that came up. One, somebody said Dreamer Designs is owned by Diamond Art Club. Is that true? I couldn't find anything on that, but maybe I just didn't find anything on it. I thought Dreamer Designs was a Canadian company. I know on their website, it says that they're located in Ontario, maybe? It's in Canada. What The address on their website is in, in Canada. I don't remember what province it said now, but anyway. And then somebody else said that Dreamer Designs limited the amount of kits that you could buy at one time. And I was curious if that, it was during a sale. So I was curious if it was because there was a sale, if that's just their typical policy. Do other painting companies have that policy? Because I was talking to my husband about it and I said, you know, thinking about it, I don't think I've ever ordered more than four kits at a time. Like even during Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales, I think I've done multiple orders that resulted in more than four kits, but I think, I think the most I've ever bought at one time is three. And so now I'm curious, is that a thing? Like has anybody else run into that? Like I said, I, I think I just haven't run into that because I just haven't ordered enough kits for it to be an issue, but now I'm curious. I think I'm gonna stop there. I got most of this filled in. I've still got a little bit of this section to go, but this is going way faster than my Bubble Fairies or my Universe in a Jar, so I'm super happy about that. It's around, super happy about that. Even with all the ABs, I thought maybe it would be too much, but I'm actually really loving the way that it's turning out. So I may go back and look at Pam's done paintings and see if there's some additional things that I wanna get, because I'm pretty happy with this one. Okay, let me move around a bit, zoom out so you guys can see what I've done. Okay, so you can see here, I've just got this little section left to go and then I've got this whole side done. I actually have done a row across the bottom, but like I said, the fox here is very confetti heavy. And so I decided that I would do some of the background stuff because it's a lot more multi-placing. There's a lot of a section that looks just like this on the other side. So I may flip it and do that other side as well before I do the fox in the middle. We'll see how I feel about it. But I made some pretty good progress today, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video and putting up with all of my rambling. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.